Okay, that's enough artistic rubbish for this episode. It's all happening, people. I'm doing editing. Well, actually, there's nothing on the screen at the moment because I just clogged the file. The lovely Gigi, who I occasionally call Fifi, <laughs> much to her annoyance, is uh, hard at the labours of this boat. Best washer up ever. Do you remember Sally on my boat with the four girls? She didn't actually wash the dishes, she just smeared the food <laughs> at an even layer. So it looked sort of clean. The, co the color of the plate was all the same color. Yeah, she was a good smearer. So she didn't quite wash the, she was the, 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 the cleaner on the boat girls. <laughs> so she, did, she didn't quite clean, she just smeared. But she was the best smearer I've ever had on the boat. She was the best at that. And, oh, she was also the best swearer. If you remember that, she used to swear like it was no tomorrow. What's Clara doing? Tortilla de harina. All right. <laughs> okay. I learned it from my grandma in Guatemala, actually. Really? Yeah, okay. I did. She showed me how to do it. Oh, you part Guatemalan? Uh huh. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. And you fry them up for what? A couple of minutes, do you? Or? Uh, yeah. It doesn't take long. You just put them in the pan and mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, until they're brown. And what do you put on them? Nothing. Really? <laughs> Is there sugar in it? Yeah. Oh, okay. But you can eat them like you can combine them with uh, soups or other things. Well, we've got some sauce from last night's curry. Yeah, or just with the pineapple or with the sauce. Yeah, yeah. that would actually be great. Okay, all right. Excellent, all right. It's like boxing. Take that, Peter. Take that in your damn yeah, editing. Yeah, actually I was thinking of you uh, doing it. No. Take, take that damn editing. You can get your editing. You can get your editing and shove it in your ass. <laughs> take that, Peter. Take that. So you see what I have to put up with people? All the violence. But Gigi is lovely. Look at her. Always smiling. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, she better. She get chucked off. Sorry. That was a Tourette moment. <laughs> Okay. All right, yeah. so what we're going to do is we're going to burn with this, mm -hmm. but try not to burn the rubber. Yeah, I know. It's just everything on my boat. It'll work eventually. All right, maybe I need to do it. Do you see it? Is it on? I see it. Is it on? Is I it? see the gas. Yeah, yeah, I see oh, it. Oh, it's stop, on. stop, stop. Okay. All right. Okay, so, uh, all right, so maybe it's working now. You want to try it? Yeah. I, I gave it a little bit of a smolder. Okay. Just, um, you don't have to go all the way up to the edge. You just have to go, you know, in within a centimeter. Yeah. So that's it. It's working. You'll see the little. No, it's not working. No, it's not. Now there it's working. It is. And at the bottom there. All right. Don't get too close. And so you go. So what the manufacturers do, they put some coating on it and we're just burning that off, okay? Oh, very simple. And so it's easy. Great. And then, I'm not sure if you have to do the toothpaste, but I just do it anyway, so I mean, how hard is it? Side? And it makes it smell all fresh mm -hmm. and effervescent. Mm -hmm. Or maybe not effervescent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Effervescent? <laughs> is that a smell? I thought it for Vincent was yeah, yeah. the bubbles. Yeah, okay. pretty much. She got me. She got me. I don't know what I'm talking about, people. Right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... Let me just Can you scrub... See it? Just scrub it around. I'll, I'll do yours. Scrub it around. Like, really, really... Pretend it's you pumping my toilet. <laughs> You've got to be very severe. No, really severe. Come on, you know the toilet. The girls are having problems doing the toilet. Uh, it doesn't, well, it flushes, but they, they don't get enough force to suck 
the water up into the bowl. So what happens is all the stuff goes up the pipe. It's not followed by other water that forces it all the way down and then out. So what happens, they flush it up the pipe and then when they go, they look in, they go, oh, it's all done. And then it goes back. It's a nice little surprise. No, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I know, no because I yet. have been flushing it occasionally. I think I've been flushing it. Okay, all right. I'll shut up now. You're yeah, upset, but I'm having to go at the middle <laughs> toilet flushing Too abilities. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> I, sh I should put that in the, the um, description <laughs> with the picture of James's boat. <laughs> you might have to have big muscles to use the toilet. All right. Well, you did ask me if I was a princess, so no. Oh, right, I did, yes. I did ask the princess question because there are no princesses allowed on the boat. And then there was a bit of a pause and I thought, oh, no. <laughs> there might be a princess here. Anyway, that's when we watch that. Because I thoroughly work out who's supposed to go on the boat and um, we work out although these two girls were not so thorough because they were already here in Costa Rica so <laughs> it was a good thing but they are delightful crew the best crew ever <laughs> ah, hear that? Okay. All right, sure. we're done. So you ne just w you don't even have to wash it out now. Just wash it next time. Okay, thanks. All right. All right. Can I see it for you? That's okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> well, it'll be just chalky. Oh, space. Okay. All right, there you go, people. You get a mask, burn it, throw it in the barbecue, burn it. Mm -hmm. Toothpaste, easy peasy. And the <laughs> we're now discussing um, Gigi. She's a natural. She wants to spit out. The, the snorkel to free dive. We haven't gotten there to big depths yet, but um, it's interesting. And so what, what, what did you say? Oh, she, oh yeah, she, what was the question uh, you asked me? No, Clara asked, uh, what did you ask? Clara? I asked if it is <laughs> better to do free diving uh, without a snorkel or with a snorkel, because yeah. Peter told us that uh, professionals do it without a snorkel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not professional people. I keep the snorkel in because most of my diving's under 20 meters and doesn't make a difference. And also, there's no one to rescue me. If something goes wrong, I am on the bottom and I will be with the fishies, and that's it. Okay, there's a couple of reasons, but I'll give you the main one. If you black out, you've got a way for uh, water to come into your lungs. If you're going down with your mouth closed and you black out, you stay the way you were and there's no water. So I can rip you back up and you're not gonna have water in your lungs. So I can actually resuscitate you quicker. I'd have to put you on the rescue side position if you had the snorkel in and drain your lungs and then, well, there's a process, and then get your breathing that way. So it's an extra, com uh, extra layer of complexity. So, but I need to be able to save you, okay? So, um, yeah, and there's a, what's the other reasons? Yeah. Oh yeah, you were saying the other reasons, oh. and uh, uh, this is Gigi. She you know, let us know what are the other reasons. I was saying, and I I don't know really, but it was just like a guess that it's also because uh, I think there's a lot of breathing techniques that yeah. uh, free divers do, and it just wouldn't be possible maybe with the snorkel. Yeah, or, or it certainly is easier not to have the snorkel in your mouth. Yeah. But they're going to big depths, people. They're like 125 meters, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm barely getting to six meters. I'm going, oh, no, I'm only kidding. Anyway, all right, that. All right, waterfall adventure, here we come. Gigi's gonna be in charge of the anchor. Yep. I think we're good. And when you see the anchor, yeah. you say, anchor! Anchor! And then I'll know. But I should be back there, driving. All right, good on Oh, this last bit's a bit tricky. Okay. So just take it slowly. Go, keep going, keep going a little bit slowly. Okay, and again, again. A bit more, a bit more, a bit more. <laughs> it's a bit of time. And let's leave it like that. Okay. Because we're only going a short distance. Great. All right, thank you, Gigi. Oh, um, yeah. sorry about that.
eating on the fly. James will be coming shortly. We've got to do a head start because his boat goes twice as fast as mine. And yes, there is wind, but it's only a couple of miles up here, so. And he's stressed for time. One of his crew just said, oh, I'm gonna be in Costa Rica in a few days time. This is how crews surprise captains. They just think you can just sort of go to the next bus stop and just, you know, put them off and then they can be on time. They don't quite get it. I used to put in my ads, time, you have to be extremely flexible. You have to be able to, you know, there's none of this, we're gonna have to get back to an airplane by this very specific date. Um, because it's gonna bite you in the bum. Like once, I had to get someone to the airport. I'm never gonna do it again. No joke, it was 40 knots up this, um, near Hamilton Island, I don't know if you know this, but Hamilton Island, there's another island right next to it, and the wind was funneling up. So it was 40 knots on the tower, but it was probably 50 knots. I couldn't push through it. It was crazy, and, they, and thankfully all the planes got canceled. <laughs> Otherwise, they were gonna miss their flight. So never sail to a deadline, people. And crew, you gotta be so specific. You gotta ask them continually, and, and you, you're good with time. Otherwise, I go, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta, in 12 hours, I gotta be at the airport. Always happens, no matter how specific you are. Not my crew, we've already gone through that. They've got plenty of time. Anyway, so he has to go. So, alas, we're gonna say goodbye to James yet again. I only get to see him for five or six days at a time. It's crazy, you can't do anything really. We can't really plan anything really good. I wanted to sail all the way down to Columbia, that way. There's a couple of islands and there's lots of reef that no one got, you know, no one's been to. Well, very few people have been to. Um, so, anyway, I'll do that with the girls. All right, we're soon to be uh, entering the labyrinth. I'll show you. So we're going to take a shortcut through here to get down here. I can see Ria Suga now. Otherwise, I have to, I'm going to go between here. Otherwise, I have to go all the way around. It's all good. I've got tracks and it's pretty light and I've got my essential for reef uh, traveling. Polaroids, people. See this island here? That definitely has a croc on it. Well, it did a year ago. <coughs> when Margarita was, uh, we were anchored on the other side. When Margarita was having a shower, there was another guy. She was having a nudie shower at the back as the sun was going down. And there was this guy in a boat, maybe 50 meters away perving on her and she's going oh bloody pervert well he wasn't perving at her there was a croc that just went from his boat and was swimming making a beeline for her and he's looking at it and margarita thought obviously and so he got in the dinghy and quickly went up to margarita and he said miss get out of the water there's a croc coming and so that was just on the other side so we might do that with the girls we might go see if we can find um some croc tracks and see if it's still there because it is a while back now it's probably not a year ago it's probably two years ago oh i've got to pay attention coming up to reef as you can see it's clear as a muddy river after a landslide after a tsunami and during a flood There's our destination, just uh, to the right of that boat. Incidentally, that boat hasn't moved in like six weeks. Um, when we come back, because I've got to do some uploads here, I might go check on him because he might be dead. I mean, I didn't see him at all in the time I was here. I was here for eight days doing videos and uploading and didn't see anyone move. I saw the lights go on and off as the sun was going down, but that could all be automatic. Yeah, he could be dead. It'll be ripe. If he, if, <laughs> well, anything over a day, I guess he'll be ripe. Shouldn't laugh. Might happen to me one day. Gigi, Gigi thinks it's um, a sad, sad thing. Yes. Look at this. Breakfast. It was a lot <laughs> Clara's just been slaving away for an hour and a half making all these tears. <laughs> and when Peter asked me in the beginning, oh, uh, how long will it take? It won't take long, no, because we will start to say. I was like, no, no, just like 15 minutes. <laughs> uh -huh. Excellent, all right. Excellent. Let's enjoy. Buen provecho in Spanish. What do you say in German? Uh, guten Appetit. Yeah. And in Australian, we're very civilized. Get it, India. 
Get it in here. <laughs> Shovel it in before it escapes from your plate. Otherwise you might have to hunt it down with a rock and kill it. It's culture, people. I'm teaching, I'm teaching the European and the South American culture. Well that was, uh, well, that was breakfast on the go. That's our destination. We'll just go in, try, hopefully I can see the reefs with my sunnies. It's all gone all grey. Anchor behind, go find a local and ask him if he wants to be our guide. Give him a little bit of money or just get some in instructions. And uh, find our way to the waterfall. Well, oh wow. Well, now I see a stick. Okay, I gotta go left of that stick. This is a bit trickier, this entrance. Uh, the bear house guy said in the guide, don't go the north way. Um, but you can't be safe your whole life, people. And if you've got Polaroids, you can make good judgment. So I can see, now I can see this shoal area there. And there's obviously some fish farm there. And I can see a stick up there. So we're sweet. It's all... It's all in a day's work as a sailor, people. You can't be too careful, otherwise you'll never go anywhere. Wow, the girls are fitting in great. Editing, uh, cooking and cleaning, it's wonderful. I'm just in charge of entertainment. Okay, it's a hard job, someone has to do it. There you go, another bit of paradise people. Somewhere up there is the waterfall. Okay, change of plans. Uh, James had problems, he broke his generator and his alt is not working and he got here a bit late so we can't do the, the walk. The, he's leaving tomorrow so we've got to do something. So there's a bit of breeze so we're going to sail to Chichimi and hopefully do the wreck but that's three hours away, it's like 15, 16 miles. So, um, but at least get something done, you know, something exciting. For you guys, people, these are the sacrifices we make. But we did get veggies, it wasn't so bad. Now I know where it is and we'll come here early. I'll do it with the girls and we'll choose a nicer day. It's not the greatest day, we'll try and get a sunny day. And um, we'll spend like a few hours at the waterfall rather than walking, because this is many hours walk into the bush and we're gonna get back in the dark. And, I don't know about you guys walking in the dark, but once I did a bushwalk, I came back from Mount Warning in Australia, the Australians will know it, far out. That was a difficult walk at night. Can only rely on the moonlight through the, the canopy. It's terrible. Because, um, oh look, what's that happening? Because uh, you break a leg, like so easily. Didn't though. Uh, got away with it, as per usual. Anyway, we're gonna leave and we'll start sailing, all right? Catch you in a bit. Nothing is ever plain sailing with Zingaro and Freedom, let's face it. The saga continues next episode.